Hello everyone and welcome to another Minnie and Me painting session offered by Garden City Arts. Today we are painting our cute little froggy hanging out on a lily pad and I'm going to be walking you through this painting step by step. Okay, so if you purchased a kit from Garden City Arts, make sure you have your paint laid out in the order um, that you see here, so one through seven. If you did not purchase a kit, no worries, you can still paint this painting. Make sure you have a canvas painted light blue and you can mix your colors as you go. All right, have some brushes on hand, some paint water, chalk and piece of paper towel and you will be ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, step number one is all about drawing. We're not even gonna start painting yet because first we have to plan. We want a nice big frog in kind of the middle of our canvas. In the original painting, I have my frog's toesies going off the bottom of the canvas. You can do that too, or you can keep your whole frog all on one in the middle of the canvas, not running off. It's up to you. I'm gonna start off with uh, drawing some parentheses. These are two curved lines that kind of face each other. This is going to be for the side of my frog's face. And I just want to get these guys in. Now the reason we're using chalk today, you're probably like, why chalk? Well, it's because when you make a mistake, like I just did here, you can take a clean, damp brush and you can erase the chalk and it disappears. Okay, so you can fix your mistakes as you draw. A second reason that we use it is because when we paint over the chalk, guess what? It disappears. So I'm going to draw the top and the bottom of my little froggy's face. Then I'm going to add a nice little cup underneath the frog's face. This cup is gonna be small, it's for his body. I'm coming down, make a nice curvy line and then going back up. And there we go, we have our frog's body. Now remember, you can always add a little bit, take off a little bit, whatever you need to do. Okay, next, I'm going to come up to the top of the um, froggy's face and I'm gonna put on his two eyes. Frog's eyes are on the tops of their head and all we have to do are two little hills or two little curved lines. So there's one for one eye and two for the other eye. You wanna make sure they're about the same size I didn't make mine about the same size, but that's okay. You can add or detract until you get the right froggy face, okay? It's all about just tweaking it just a little bit and then erasing what you don't want so that you know exactly where you're painting, okay? So I'm gonna come down to his legs. Now, we're gonna draw his back legs first. His back legs kind of look like butterfly wings. They come out, big curved line, and then come back in. Okay, and disappear um, behind his body. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, up and back in. Um, again, try to make him symmetrical. Symmetrical means if I drew a line down the center, everything on the left side would look the same as everything on the right side, okay? Our faces are symmetrical. Our, most people's bodies are symmetrical, okay? So we're gonna draw our frog symmetrical. Next, I'm going to draw a trapezoid, I believe is what it's called. It's basically like a rectangle, except its sides are a little bit slanted and kind of pushing upwards. So instead of like a rectangle, we're just making little triangles on the sides and taking out that extra. And there he goes. There's kind of the shape of the foot that we're going for. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Then you just add little tiny bumps going off your canvas for the frog's little toesies. Can you see those? And again, my frog is running off the bottom of the canvas, just like in the original. If you want, you can add the foot so that you see the whole thing. You would have little toesies off of your trapezoid and that's what your frog foot would look like. Okay. Now remember, we use chalk because we can erase it, so don't worry. If it shows up, you can just erase it right off or you can cover it up with paint. Okay, once you have a frog, you are ready to move on. So go ahead and get caught up and then we'll move on to step number two in just a moment. 
Okay, we're back with step number two. Now, we're going to use small brushes first to fill in our froggy's body. And we are painting in every single part, okay? So we can ignore all of these lines that you see here. They're going to disappear and we're gonna have one solid uh, form or outline of our frog, okay? It's just gonna be a kind of a silhouette. Now, we're gonna start with small brushes first and then we can work our way up to the big brushes. I'm gonna use a shader brush and I'm gonna show you really fast using color number one, which is kind of a light green with yellow mixed into it, how to outline. So we're gonna focus on outlining first and how to hold your brush. If you hold your brush on the side, it or sorry, use your brush on the side, it fills in. We don't really need that yet. What we need is to use the top of our brush, so we're holding it almost perpendicular to our canvas, okay, and the table, and we can make a line using the top edge of our brush. Now, if your paint is a little dry, you can dip your paintbrush in water and then mix that water into your paint while it's on your palette, okay? The foam plate is your palette today. And load up your brush. Now, I'm gonna use the top edge of my brush to create a nice outline. And remember, I'm going around the outer edge of his body, so I'm not worrying about all those other lines that we drew a long time ago that separated the eyes from the head and all of that. I'm not worried about that. I'm drawing along the outer edge. So I'm gonna outline the whole thing. And then once I'm done outlining, and remember that foot of your, the foot, the toesies of your frog run off the canvas, okay? So it's okay to run your outline off the canvas. Now, after I'm done outlining, I can start filling in. And that's when I can use the side of my brush to fill in space. So I start right at the outline. That's kind of like our guide. That's our line that we're staying, where we're staying inside and we bring it in. This is the point where, if you want, you can use your bigger brush. Your bigger brush to fill in. Okay, so start right at the line and bring it in. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the video and fill my frog in really fast. You take your time. You want the whole thing painted the light green, the light yellow green. Okay, let's speed up. Okay, we're back and ready for step number three. Now, step number three involves the background. So we are gonna leave our frog alone for now. We're gonna let it dry, cause I bet it's pretty wet if yours is anything like mine. And we're going to draw the background really quickly, okay? So first we're gonna put in a little line behind our frog. That is going to be where we put the horizon line, okay? The horizon line is where sky meets ground, or sky meets water in this case, because our frog is on a pond. So this is gonna be where the water stops and the sky begins. Next, we're going to very carefully draw a nice big circle around our frog that goes off the bottom of our canvas, okay? This is the lily pad that our froggy is sitting on. Now, if you wanna make it a really cool lily pad, you can take and add a triangle off to the side and erase that line. That now looks like a lily pad or Pac-Man, depending on what you think or what you remember from your video games. Okay, so now that we have kind of a plan, we're going to move on to colors number two and colors number three. Color number two is our lily pad color. It is a very blue green and very dark. And color number three is our water. It's a cerulean blue. Okay, so I'm gonna start with color number two. I'm gonna use my small brush because we have a lot of little teeny tiny areas that we need to fill in. I'm gonna start by going right up to my froggy's body and I'm going to outline using some of this blue-green paint. 
So this is for our lily pad. After you outline and block out where you're painting, you can fill it in. And I would suggest using the small brush the entire time because again, we're filling in some pretty teeny tiny dainty spaces, okay? So there's in between the Faragi's legs. Now let's go around his foot and then we can go around his legs and so on and so forth, okay? Make sure you stay inside your lily pad. So there's an outer line right here that you don't cross, you don't go past. Okay, and remember if you need to, mix a little bit of water into your paint to make sure it's nice and fluid and easy to use. And then you can fill in. Okay, fill in that space in between the frog's body and the outer edge or outline of your lily pad. I'm going to speed up the video again and get that lily pad done. Okay, we are done with the lily pad. We should have a nice dark green lily pad outlined around and filled in around our froggy. Now we're going to paint in the water. Now the way we paint in the water is very important, okay? So let's talk really fast about our paint. If we put on thick, heavy paint with no water mixed in, it's very thick and heavy. You can't see through it, okay? That's what we call opaque. If you add water to your paint, it is thinner, and transparent. That means you can see through it. I am going to use transparent paint, so paint that has been watered down. So I take a little bit of paint and a little bit of water and mix it together to make a glaze, okay? That's what that's called in painting. A glaze is basically paint watered down. So I'm going to, once again, go around my frog and now I have to go around my lily pad as well and very carefully fill in everything that's supposed to be water. You can even paint in the sides if you want to. It's up to you, okay? Um, now I'm going to use my transparent paint and I'm gonna speed up the video and I'm going to fill in everything that's water. Once you do the transparent paint, you can come back in with some heavier paint and you can put in little waves. Do you see that? Here, let me fill this in really fast. Okay. Do you see how you can make little waves by using some heavier paint to make lines? Okay. Have fun with your water. Play with it. Have fun. Okay. And we're going to speed up the video. All right, we're gonna move on and whip out color number four. Um, this is a black, Mars black color, and we're also gonna pick up our chalk again. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your frog is nice and dry before you do this step. We're going to start adding some of the details. So we have to add the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna start off by making two little diagonal lines that kind of point to each other. Those are for the frog's nose, okay? Frogs don't really have nose, they just have little teeny tiny slits for their nose. Then I'm gonna put on a big huge happy smile on this frog's face. So basically we're making a curved line that looks kind of like a bowl. And then I'm gonna put on two other little curved lines that look like bowls for his cheeks. Now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. Now once again, Frog eyes do not look like our eyes. They sit on top of the frog's head. So I'm gonna put two little lines at the top of his head for these frog eyes. Then I'm going to put a hill on top. This is a nice curved line that looks like a hill and that's for the tops of his eyes. So. Now we're going to pick up our round brush and we're going to paint in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, so this round brush looks kind of like a pencil. We can use it to make a very nice thin line, but you can only get thin lines if you press light as a feather, light as a feather. 
Okay, if I press really hard and bend my brush over like that, look what kind of line it makes. It makes a very thick line. So maybe practice this just a little bit. You can practice it maybe not on your hand. Your parents might not appreciate that, but maybe on your palette, okay? Practice on your palette. Make some thin lines and some th thick lines. I'm gonna start with his nose and I'm going to put kind of a medium line. So I'm pushing a little bit harder because I want these lines to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so I have my nose. Now I'm going to do a nice big curved line for his or her mouth. Now, one problem with chalk is that it kind of dries out your paint. So you might have to wash off your brush every once in a while if you notice that the chalk is kind of making your paint hard to work with or you might have to mix some water into it, okay? Either or. Then I'm going to make a nice curvy line for either side of my frog's face. Now, I had a hair in my brush that went rogue, and so this is a perfect time to show you how to erase. You can take a clean, damp brush and you can pick up the paint by just wiggling it back and forth. Kind of how we used the paintbrush to pick up the chalk same kind of way, okay? So if I wanna make my mouth a little bit smaller, I start at the outer edge of the paint and I wiggle it back and forth and pull it up, okay? Just like that. Okay, there we have it. I have my frog smile and nose. Now I'm going to move on to my froggy's eyes. So I'm going to start by outlining. We are gonna be filling these eyes in with solid black paint. So I need to outline first, and then I'm going to fill it in, okay? If you need to, you can grab that shader brush to fill in. You don't have to fill in with the round brush. It kinda of takes a little bit of time if you do it that way, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna finish up the other eye really fast. And then we will be done. Okay. I have eyes, I have a nose, and I have a mouth. My frog looks pretty happy. Okay. The other thing that you can do if your frog is a girl frog, you can put eyelashes on her. You don't have to though. You can go right to the corner of the eye. You need to press light as a feather, really light, and you can give her some eyelashes. Now boy frogs can have eyelashes too. That's okay, so if you really like the eyelashes, and even if your frog isn't a girl, that's okay. Put some eyelashes on that frog, no worries. If you like them, do it, it's your painting. Okay, I have my frog's face started, but there's one more thing we have to do before we move on. We need to take color number five. And I bet you're looking at your frog, or my frog, and going, oof, it's kind of scary. That's because there's no white inside the eyes, so there's no reflection. I'm gonna take white on my brush and I'm gonna just dot on a little kind of line, circle thing um, in the corner of the right side of each eye, okay? Then I can make a bigger line on the left side of his or her eye. Now, remember, if your paint is wet, it might take a little bit of extra white paint to get it going. And there we go. Oh, wow, that frog doesn't look so scary now. Okay, so we have the eyes finished. Let's move on to some more details. Okay, we're gonna break out color number six. Color number six is just the middle of the road green. It's just straight from the tube green. And I'm going to take a little bit of green paint on my round brush. We're adding details and lines. So now is the time to use our round brush. Um, and I'm going to outline the outer edge of my frog's face with this green paint. Now I can bring it all the way over. I'm focusing on the left side of my frog. And I can bring it all the way over to about the middle. And then I'm gonna stop Okay, and there's a reason for that. We're gonna use green on the left side and maybe kind of the middle, and we're gonna use light green for the right side, 
okay? So I'm going to come down here and this is where I add in my details. So do you remember that bowl we created for his body? We're gonna put that line back in with our green paint. It can be as thick of a line or as thin of a line as you want. I'm gonna bring it over just a tad bit more, kind of cut through the middle. I'm going to put some green on his eyes, maybe a little bit on the top of his head, not a lot. And then I'm going to outline his leg. Okay. And of course, his feet. So I can add little curly lines for his toesies. You can add basically as much detail until you feel like your frog looks like a frog and as you want, okay? Oh, I'm gonna add that a little bit. I'm actually gonna add some dark green on his right foot as well. I think it'll make more sense. You can use the lighter green if you prefer, okay? And then we need to add warts. All good frogs have warts. Okay, so these warts are gonna be little semicircles, so half circles, um, little full circles on the left side of his body. And I'm basically just making the outlines of the circles. I'm not going all the way. You can even make just, you know, little, little circles and fill them in if you want. It's up to you. I'm gonna add some onto his legs. I'm gonna add some onto his face or her face. And don't worry about making these absolutely perfect. This is just to add a little extra detail to our frog to make him or her a little bit more interesting. But it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay, I am done with my green, which was color number six. I'm ready to move on to the next step. Okay, we're on the very last step. So we have just a few things to do. So first, let's add some light green to the right side of our frog's body. Make sure you have a very clean brush and we're gonna do exactly what we did with the regular green, but we're gonna use the light green. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because we want it to look like there's a light source that's casting down on the frog and lighting up the right side of our frog. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of light. And if you want to, you could add some light into some of the warts, especially the ones that maybe you filled in. Okay and maybe some details on his legs and feet. Okay, so this is just a highlight that you can use as much or as little of as you would like. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with my highlights. Now you might notice that there's a lot of chalk on mine and that's okay. If you have chalk on yours too, that's okay. I wait until my paint is dry before I erase it because I don't want to make a mess by trying to erase chalk and hitting wet paint. So that's why I kind of wait. But it looks much better once you get the chalk out of the way, doesn't it? Okay. Now, this is an optional step. If you want, you can add some dragonflies. Dragonflies are super easy to paint. I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. And we're painting them just with white. We're filling in um, the dragonflies in the sky behind him because we wanna make sure that this frog has some snacks when he gets hungry. So to make a dragonfly, you make a curved line first, then you add a little circle on top. That is for the dragonfly's head. Then you add one big wing. Okay, and remember if your paint is getting dry and scratchy, add some water to it if it's hard to use. And then I'm gonna add one smaller wing underneath. And that's, that's it, that's your dragonfly. How easy is that, right? You can draw as many or as few of these as you want. I'm just gonna put in a few in the background because after all, all frogs need snacks. I think everybody needs snacks, right? After this painting, you might need a snack because you guys have been working hard. Okay. And there we go. I am done with my dragonflies. 
and I'm done with my painting. I hope you all had fun. I hope to see you again next month when we post another painting and find the perfect place to hang your frog. Bye.